as the early church grew, just like today's church will grow when we do these things. We recognize that the absence of conflict among nations or warring parties is not the point. Shalom is the point. And you all know about shalom. It's a wide concept compared to simply peace. Shalom is everything God wants us to be. It's wholeness. It's wellness. It's being at peace with God and with other people. But also that we discover that Christ is our peace. He defines the term. The term doesn't define him. And finally, we see our role as bridges of God to sinful man, thus fulfilling our mandates to be peacemakers, shalom messengers. Donald McGavern, please write this in your notes. Donald McGavern once wrote, wrote a book called The Bridges of God. Donald McGavern is known as the father of modern church growth. Now, in the early days, what they were trying to discern is, when something is growing, why is it growing? And when something's not growing, why isn't it growing? And so what he did was study mass movements in India. And they noticed, man, the gospel's booming in particular places. Let's study and figure out why. And he wrote a book called The Bridges of God. And this is what he said. The bridge of God is you. Relationships are the bridges from God to sinful man. Now, I know what you've heard. It's the cross, right? That's how the bridge illustration goes. And he wouldn't argue with that. But he's saying, how does the cross become the bridge? He says, you're, you're the bridge maker. You put the cross down. You and everybody here. I can almost guarantee it. Although it's only true to about 70 to 90 percent of the time. But if we were all to point to the person who's most responsible for us belonging to Jesus today, almost every one of us would point out a friend or a relative or an associate, someone where we're, or someone that lives nearby. A friend, a relative, an associate, and a neighbor. And that's what they start fighting. The modern church growth movement, some of us I hate church growth. Stop it. Because the modern church growth movement were the ones that discovered relationships work. So I think the quintessential understanding of peacemakers is someone who is a bridge to God. You have a relationship with him, and you are allowing pagans to walk across that relationship into the Father's arms. Because of your friendship to them, they even know about the Father. They even have a concern about the Father. Can I tell you how it's done? First off, let me give you the quick theology to this. The theology is simple. God is a community. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is three persons, blessed trinity. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you know it. So that is Christian orthodoxy. God in three persons, blessed trinity. God is a relationship. So, are you stunned to find out two things? Number one, 70 to 90% of the time, almost all the time, when people come to Christ, they become because of the image of God. We were made in the image of a relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would we be surprised that we find our way to God through relationships? And then we surprise the second thing. And that is discipleship happens through relationships. Remember we started talking a few moments ago uh, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, community comes first. Are we surprised that community comes first? That the way we come to discover God is through community and the way we stay in the community is going to be community. It's, it's good theology. So, real quick. You want to know a way... If you can get five people in your congregation to do this, you will have significant conversions by year's end. Five people. If you get your whole congregation to do it, you will bust loose with enormous growth. Here, here it is. It's not hard. It's just nobody does it. We understand that when Billy Graham started his ministry, people already knew the message. 
And so all they had to do was respond to the message. They already knew Jesus was Lord of all. They already knew the Bible's true. So Billy Graham just came in and said, the Bible says, and then he says, okay, the Bible says I need to go up there and receive Christ. So they ran up there and received Christ. Not so much today. The biblical literacy now is massive. People don't know the stories. People don't know Jesus and blind Bartimaeus. But they don't know the story. They don't, they, don't, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. So what, what has to happen? This. Two numbers. Seven and three. You need to get your people to move out to pagan people, folks who don't know Jesus, folks who are unchurched, and touch them qualitatively seven times with love. Seven times. You need to keep track of it. Make a card. Find a way to keep track of it. Seven times with love. Simply relate to people. Like, I don't know, a, a death happens, and you're the first person there, and after a week's gone, you go back to that person, you're just there for them. During the death of a spouse or death of a child, you're just there loving on them, not saying anything, just being there, cooking a meal, saying, what can I do for you? You're there. And let's say six other things happen like that. Six other things happen. Let's, I want to take you out to lunch. Let me take you out to lunch. You touch someone seven times with love, and guess what? They're going to be wide open to what you have to say. Then what has to happen? Well, this isn't Billy Graham age anymore. Billy Graham can come on, say, the Bible says, and people responded to it because of biblical literacy. Everybody knew the stories. Everybody knew the message in the 1950s. They don't now. So you're going to have to tell them the gospel. They're going to have to hear the gospel <clears throat> through those seven loving touches at least three times. It might be you take them to church and they hear it that way. It might be that you share your story. This is what my life was like before Christ. This is how I came to Christ. This is what my life has been like since Christ. Uh, Mark Bird shares a great little thing in his classes about how to share Christ. You do that three times. And I guarantee you, if you do this, and everybody in your congregation can do this, with uh, everybody in your congregation, six people in your congregation can do this across the year, you will have conversions. Do you have any idea how many churches grew this year? Had more people in their church this year than they had last year because of conversions. You know? Would you believe it's single digits? Would you believe that almost no church is growing today because of conversions in your community? Wouldn't you like to be that church? Yeah. You know what it's saying? You're going to be a peacemaker then. And by the way, when they come in, their hairs aren't going to be in, in a bun. Mm -hmm. When they come in, they're not going to wear a tie. When they come in, they're going to drink. When they come in, you're just going to have to put up with some stuff for a while. You'll disciple them into the right life. But when they come in, you can't flip out mm -hmm. that they're going to R-rated movies. They're going to be going to R-rated movies. You're just going to have to love them and keep loving them. And guess what will happen? You will be one of the few churches in America that grows by conversion. 